Okay, now, uh, we've got a bit of a, a trivia thing going on right now. You could look at the answers in the finance report if you wanted to, but it would be interesting just to get your perspective. There's a website you can go to if you want to interact with this. It's called menti.com. You don't need to create an account or anything like that. But if you're interested, you could go there and there's a code, which is right up the top there. It's quite small, five double five double two seven two four seven. And the challenge is to try and rank from number one being most through down to whatever it is. Where do we get most of our money from as a church? So I thought it would be an interesting way just to see um, what our understanding is. So if you're interested, you go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I.com, and then there's a code which is also up there, double five double two seven two four seven. And you can see that uh, we've got a number of different sources of income or money coming in. I, don't, I think income sits a little bit uncomfortably with me for a church because we're not a business. Um, and interesting to try and think about where, where does most of our money come from. If you're doing that now, I'll let you have a guess. So at the moment, regular giving is winning. Money from the Anglican Diocese is coming last. There's, there's a fair way behind there. Government grants, I think that's my error. It should only be there once. What about COVID-19 government support? So we're thinking money last year in 2021. Where did that figure? I'll let you just have a minute to look over it if you're on there. If, if the technology is not for you tonight, all good as well. I'm just checking severe. Is that working okay, that one? It's working? Okay. So regular giving is making a strong charge here, it appears. One-off gifts are going backwards, along with everything else. It is a bit of a trick question. Can anyone see the trick in the question? Is anyone, uh, Margie, you're nodding. What, what do you think the trick is? Sorry? Yeah, which one do you think no money comes from? Yeah, yeah. So we'll get to that later on. Um, but, spoiler, yes, the money from this church goes to the Anglican Diocese to support the broader diocese. We don't receive money from the Anglican Diocese. Okay, now I think there's another slide. Um, Jono, if you go at the back, it, it should just advance like a PowerPoint. Thanks. So the next question is, where does the money go? And a trivia question there to go, where does the money go? Is it happening or not happening? John, is, yep. Okay, yeah, let's go to this one. So for those who got onto it, um, there was a, a joke one there as well that the money goes to paying for the clergy to go to a tropical highland on holidays, uh, which was just to see if we're awake at this time of the day, uh, which, you know, we had it all lined up, but it was cancelled due to COVID. No, we wouldn't do that. So uh, where did we get money from in 2021? So this is a snapshot, and John said that this has been printed out if you're interested to look at a little bit more uh, in detail. So you can see that the majority of money coming in comes from regular gifts. Last year we did get some significant sort of one-off or donations which were for a particular purpose. So there was a very significant gift which was given to do some maintenance on the, the roof of the old church, which was extremely generous. And there were some gifts that were given to support the air conditioners going in. We also got some government grants for that as well. And on top of that, we also got some support from the government, uh, which was around COVID-19. Uh, although I would say it was mainly 2020, 
where we got most of that support. We got a little bit uh, last year as well. So I'm not sure if there's any um, surprises there for you. Maybe a couple that I just thought I'd draw attention to. One of them that I think is interesting is finance income. So there was a benefactor quite a number of years ago who made a donation to the church. And as a result of that, we've got money which is in like a trust which goes towards maintenance. And that, that is a small amount of uh, income for the church each year, um, but it does help just with some of that maintenance expense. And the other one as well is the property income. So that's from tenants who use the halls primarily. And um, that, that source of income has actually dropped a lot from COVID, but it's also dropped because um, we used to get a lot of income from CSU exam supervision and CSU no longer need that. So that's, that's dropped off if you look uh, over the time series as well. So is there a question? Okay, so the, the grants which were for the air conditioning for that specific purpose, so that is there as the 12,000. And there's another one which is around 29,000, which is other income or sundry income. And that was for COVID, um, like JobKeeper. No, they're separate. They're separate as far as I can understand on that. I'm happy to have another look at that um, as well. But my understanding is we've separated them out because they're for different purposes. And one of them is tied to this um, investment as well. Okay, so that's where the money is coming from. You can see 70% is from regular giving. Where's it going? So 56% is freeing up people to use their gifts to serve. You know, it is not a business. It is a stipend. And that, that money is to free up John and Jono and others to be able to serve so that they can use their God-given gifts to build up God's people here. And so that, that's really the main game. We try to keep uh, expenses down in other areas um, so that we minimise the amount that people need to pay, but obviously there's maintenance things that need to be covered depending on what sort of things happen in the year. You can see um, the air conditioning was 8%, so that was you know a one-off expense from installing that. Um, but uh, something that is going to be really useful for a number of years to come. The rectory expenses is a small component of some of the utilities in the rectory which are deemed as being for ministry. Um, so that's why there's rectory expenses there. Property maintenance includes cleaning around here. Parish administration includes uh, paying for our bookkeeping software, uh, also having an administrator part-time. Resources for ministry is, you know, things like programs and, and books and things that are purchased for the purpose of ministry. And then the one, uh, if you're new to Anglican churches, which might be a bit more interesting, is the parish cost recovery. So that is a, an amount that each church is assessed for, and that's based on the size of the church. And that money goes into a pool which allows the Sydney Diocese to pay for a legal team, to um, provide insurance coverage for churches. It also goes into a fund which can be used, you know, with massive growth corridors in Sydney happening. We want to be able to, as a diocese, have the opportunity to buy land before it's too late. So it goes into supporting that um, as a bit of a levy for churches. Is there any questions about that graph? Yes, Elaine. Okay, I think, I think there's a couple of things they look at, but it would include uh, the, the scale of the church, so in terms of the amount of money that the church uh, has in its budget. But if, in terms of the exact calculation, I'd have to get back to you with an answer, but there is an assessment that, that they make. And, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so just under an $8,000 jump this year and very significant. I agree. Yeah, to me, it's still a huge jump. Sorry. Hmm. It's the same right across the board of the Yeah, my, my understanding is that they held off some of the increases to the parish cost recovery in 2021 for each church. And then that meant we kind of got a double whammy in 2022 for this year. So our budgeted parish cost recovery for this year is going to be significantly higher for that reason. Yeah, it is significant and it is um, one of the main headlines in terms of like why, why do we have bigger expenses this year? It's one of the big drivers that's happening there. Hmm. And, and part, of, part of our commitment in the diocese, but something that we have no control over in terms of, you know, we can't look at it and go, oh, not this year. Um, so there is a document which they provide which clarifies what, the components are and, and why they felt that, that that was necessary. So that, that would be from the diocese and that would be through... Yes. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Yeah. But if, if you're interested, uh, the, the document that's published around that there's, there's great transparency. You can look down and look at every church in the Sydney Diocese and it will, will provide guidance around what their parish cost recovery is for this year. Um, and it will also go into detail around what were the components and why they felt that was necessary. But I, I agree, Elaine, it's a significant jump when you think that, um, you know, I, I'm not sure, I don't know about anyone in the room, but I didn't get a 14% pay rise this year. Um, yeah. Uh, I'd have to I have to double check that one for you because I get the question. Yeah, are we could we have capitalised that rather than yeah. Hmm. I'd have to get back to you on that one. Yeah, good question. Yep. Okay, so parish cost recovery includes superannuation for ministry staff. There's a separate item for superannuation which is for non-ministry staff, so parish administrator and cleaner. Um, so there's that component, there's a, an item there which is also for salary continuance insurance for ministry staff in the parish cost recovery as well. So a lot of them are you know, what you consider on costs that normally a business would have to absorb directly but it's included in the, the kind of the formula that we get for parish cost recovery. So a lot of those things are done for us through that. No, no, what I mean is that it's included in the parish cost recovery. So there's two, superannuation is included as a separate item for non-ministry staff, but there is also superannuation which we pay indirectly through parish cost recovery 
which goes through the diocese rather than us paying direct to a super fund. I'd, I'll have to have another look, but I'd, I'm pretty confident we'll have an item there for superannuation. Yep. So it's superannuation other, item on page number two under profit and loss, superannuation other, and it's sitting at around $2,000. Yeah, so in that sense, it is a staffing expense, whether it's directly ministry, I, c I can see a question there, but it is a superannuation cost. Yeah, yeah. So in that sense, yeah, you're right. Like it could sit under um, parish administration, superannuation, but yeah, there might be a good reason for it sitting there that I'm not aware of. Um, I've still, still got the L plates on. Yeah, Ben. So just to clarify, the, the form of these accounts is directed to us from who we're ordered by, Ben Corp. Um, so some of the things might feel a little bit clunky or, you know, I, I can see reasons to do it another way, but it, it's in terms of them having oranges and oranges as they look around churches. Yeah. Okay, so that's where money's going. Do we have enough money? Maybe that's a question you've got. So um, we have been running some small surpluses for the last three years and um, you know, I think that's something that we can thank God for. I think we do need to stop and thank God for his ongoing provision and that he has met our needs through what has been a pretty crazy time. Uh, and you know, it's been partly through government support but it's been partly as well or largely through regular giving uh, from his people here. So I think we need to give thanks for that. You can see the last time we had uh, a shortfall was back in 2018. But since then we've been running small surpluses, which is what you want, a small surplus, just so that we're able to uh, be responsible stewards, so that we have uh, a reserve that's available if we need it. Um, so that, that's a really positive thing. Now, our overall budgeted expenses are predicted to go up, and as we've identified earlier, um, Elaine picked up on it, it's largely driven by our cost recovery increasing. So that is up 14% for 12 months from last year, and that's because some of the, the increases were held back during the middle of peak COVID. Okay, now our, our budgeted giving is down 14% because we got quite, we, we got some significant donations which were for repairs to the roof of the old church and also that went toward the air conditioners here. So it's not that we're expecting our regular giving to be down, it's just when you look at overall giving and you think, well, we, we don't want to bank on uh, getting some significant gifts again, it would be great if we did, but... We don't want to bank on that, so that's why it looks down. And we're also down because we received around $29,000 from COVID support payments um, last year as well. So what does that mean? Um, it means that at this stage we've included plans for a church fair which, uh, looking back historically, has tended to run with a surplus of around $8,000 when you factor out the costs of running that as well. 
So we've budgeted for that at this stage. You know, it seems like that. That seems like a pretty wise thing to do. It's a great community event. Uh, and, and restrictions are being eased, so it could be a great way to also re-engage with the community. But that is one of the assumptions, I suppose, that I thought I'd flag. However, um, because of that bump with the parish cost recovery, we are looking at a projected deficit that you can see there, which uh, is not massive, but it's not something that I'm especially excited about um, thinking that it looks like we're going to finish the year with more going out than what's come in. And part of, part of the reason for this, I think, is that it will just take a while for church to feel like it's humming again, given that it's been so interrupted by lockdowns. Uh, you know, and I was here this morning at 10.30. Praise God, there was you know, a, a, a lot of people here and it feels like, with restrictions easing, it feels like we're getting more people coming to church. And, um, you know, some of that interruption from COVID, which has affected pretty much every church that I've, I've heard about in Sydney, um, some of that is being reversed and, you know, optimistic that because of that, we'll see a nice um, increase again as people start coming back to church and we can start to see giving increase as well from that. So the key message, and I, I think I'm totally preaching to the converted here, is, sorry, it's all brand, uh, which is just to stay regular with your giving and to pass on that message, encourage that message, because really that is, that's, that's the thing that really supports uh, the church being able to carry on with its activities. That's the thing that is uh, really helpful in terms of being able to plan for the future I know that there's things that uh, parish council, that wardens and John and Jono would love to do in the future. And for us to continue to be able to be a great light on the hill here in Wentworth Falls, it really helps to have um, consistent giving to enable that. So I, I just want to thank you uh, for your giving. And I want to uh, praise God that he continues to provide what we need to be able to meet our needs here. Um, 